Good evening, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy, but first a word of prayer. Father, I just uh, thank you for this opportunity again to, to share your word, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to share the signs of the times. And I just pray, Lord, that this video tonight will touch people's lives and hearts. And that you will use it for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright, I do have a few news stories that I want to cover tonight. But first, I want to share something else that's on my heart. And, uh... Just... just do, this is a, I'm going to start off tonight talking about some things that are happening on my channel. And I just want to address them real quick. And go over some scripture. And then... Then get into the news story. So, you know... <sighs> I started this channel because I love Jesus Christ and I love Bible prophecy. I've studied Bible prophecy, been interested in Bible prophecy now for over 30 years. And uh, in my background, I wanted to maybe be a youth pastor. I wanted to go to Bible college. That did not work out. And I've always felt the call of God on my life. And, and now that we're so close to the return of Jesus Christ, I feel I'm just obeying the call of God on my life to, to do something to, to preach the gospel and get the word out. And I'm going to continue to do so. And I do not claim to have all the answers. And I don't expect you to agree with any or all of what I have to say. I will tell you what I believe to be the truth. I will tell you with conviction. I will tell you with boldness. I will... I will always tell you what I believe to be the absolute truth. <clears throat> there is so much discord. There is so much dis uh, confusion and disagreements. That's why there are so many different <laughs> denominations out there of Christianity and there's different beliefs. I am not going to do this channel and constantly be debating people over all sorts of issues. I, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't claim to have all the answers, and I, and I don't expect you guys to, or anybody, to, to agree with anything I'm saying. I, I just hope that what you, if you're watching my videos, that you will consider them, pray about them, listen to them, take them to heart. If you don't like them, you don't agree, that's fine. And I, and I certainly welcome all questions, all comments, and all concerns. That's all welcome. If, you, if I say something you don't agree with, absolutely tell me. But if I respond and tell you why I say what I say and what I believe, I am not going to continue non-stop debating back and forth over and over, trying to prove each other wrong and arguing. We are living in the very, very last days, and our time can be spent so much more valuably, like in prayer for our unsaved loved ones, in reading the Word of God, in encouraging the brethren, not in sowing discord and debate and trying to prove that we know more about the Bible and that our theology is better than your theology and I'm right and you're wrong. And Bible prophecy is one of the most divisive issues you can discuss. If you don't believe in dispensations, if you don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, if you don't believe that Daniel's 70th week is in the future, that's fine. You, that's, you can believe that. I'm not going to change my mind. I know why, why I believe what I believe. I believe I, I understand what the Word of God teaches. I do believe in dispensations. We are no longer under law. There's no temple sacrifice anymore. Jesus Christ came to be the final sacrifice. He was crucified. He rose again. He started his church, his body of believers. It's amazing to me how you use the word church and people want to jump all over you about the word church. <clears throat> or are we living in the church age or are we living in the age of grace? I don't like the word church. I don't like the church age. Well, the fact of the matter is we're living in the age of grace in which Jesus Christ started his church. If you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you are a member of his church. Church is, I don't know why church is such a nasty word. Go to the book of Revelation and there's letters to seven churches. Each one saying, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit 
says to the churches. I don't understand all this bickering. I really don't. Um, so like I said, I, I'm not going to debate every detail of doctrine and theology. I'm, I'm going to focus on sharing the gospel and sharing the, the current events point to the soon return of Jesus Christ. If he doesn't return for another 200 years, I've not done any harm by telling people that the signs are here now. And if you aren't saved, you don't want to die in your sin. And you might want to think about turning your life over to Jesus Christ, ASAP, regardless of when he returns. But when we see these day, the day approaching like we're seeing now, it's certainly more, very important to share the word of God. I have a lot of unsaved family and friends and loved ones, and I'm going to continue to preach the truth. I got a lot of scripture I want to cover tonight, and you know, like I said, I, I don't I don't claim to have all the answers. Let's let's go to Proverbs chapter six, verse nineteen. Because if you are sowing discord, if you are debating back and forth and insulting people on my channel, my subscribers, move on. You will be blocked. I will block your comments. And there's nothing wrong with disagreement, but arguing all the time is not going to be tolerated. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 19. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. I am not going to allow people to sow discord among the brethren. This channel is about encouraging people, trying to win lost souls to Jesus Christ, and being excited about looking for our blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. As I've said, I do not claim to have all of the answers. And anybody else who claims to have all the answers, you don't. And that's why I'm turning to, again to Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. I do have total conviction and commitment to what I believe. And I believe we live in a time where we need to be bold. And I'm going to boldly proclaim what I, what I feel God has put on my heart whenever I do a video. As I said, if you don't agree with my channel, if you don't like my channel, then move on. There are other channels. Um, and, and again, there's... Let me give you an example. Let me, let me give you a really good example. People gripe all the time. They complain about... Are we the bride of Christ? Or are we not the bride, bride of Christ? Are we the body of Christ? We're not the bride of Christ. Don't say we're the bride of Christ because the Bible doesn't say we're the bride of Christ. Well, let's go to Romans chapter 7, verse 4. <clears throat> Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit, unto God. We sh ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead. Does it use the, the phrase bride there? No. But if it says you are married to him who was raised from the dead, that would make you the bride. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Does it say in that, in that verse the word bride? No, but I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Why are we debating whether we're the bride or whether we're the body? Or Yes, we're both. That's why I plan on being at the marriage supper of the Lamb when the trumpet sounds. But if you don't want to call it the bride, that's your prerogative. Uh, let's go to some more scripture. Here's the things that I believe are 
not debatable. There's so many things we can debate. Gifts of the Spirit, speaking in tongues, not speaking in tongues, dispensations. You, 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 we can, there's a lot of things that are open for discussion and debate, I guess. But here are some things that I stand on. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you do not die to yourself, die to sin, and, and turn to Jesus Christ in faith, you cannot be saved. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter one, verse eighteen. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. I'm going to preach the cross and salvation through the finished work of Jesus Christ, and not debate little details of whether we disagree or not agree on certain issues. Uh, <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, verse 12. I, I, I uh, present this every night as I'm going through the gospel message. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 1 Corinthians to, uh, chapter 2, verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The gospel is very simple. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God. He was the perfect sacrifice. He died for the sins of the world. And the only way you can be saved is through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and His resurrection. Uh... John 14, 6, John, Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That is, I'm not gonna, that's, that's, you can't debate that. If you debate that, you are, if you don't believe that, you are flat out wrong. There are no, there's no other path to, G, to salvation other than through Jesus Christ. He is the door. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not debatable. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We cannot earn our salvation, no matter what you do in your church, church membership, sacraments, whatever. We are saved by grace through faith alone, period. Again, I've said before, I'll say again, the gospel is very, very simple. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Apostle Paul. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye also have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's very, very simple. We try to make things so much more complicated than it has to be. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Reading that verse made me think of another verse. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Uh, and then finally, here's what it really boils down to. The most important question we all will ever deal with in our lifetime. Here's what it all hinges on. And this is what I'm going to proclaim 
every night. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 16. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The most important question any human being will ever answer in their lifetime is, who do you say Jesus Christ is? Your eternal destiny depends on that very thing. Finally, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If you are depending on your own efforts, your religious rituals, your church membership, your good deeds to save you, you're to, following the Pope, being a Catholic, being a part of that church, or a church, any church, any denomination, it does not save you. We are saved by faith, by grace, through faith alone in Jesus Christ. And if you do not go to Jesus Christ in faith, on your own, get on your knees, repent of your sin, turn to Jesus Christ, ask Him to forgive you, admit that you're a sinner, and you and you cannot save yourself, that he died for you, shed his blood and rose again, and ask him to save you. Otherwise, in that day, he will say to you, Depart from me, I never knew you. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ is the only, only way to God. And we are living in the very, very last days, and there is so much false doctrine, so much deception. There's a one world religion coming. There's an antichrist and a false prophet that are about to take office. All the preparations are here. And things are moving so very, very fast. So with that, let's get into a few news stories. Out of time. Pope Francis isn't holding back. And U.S. politicians should watch out. Oh, wow. Okay, it says... Here are the four foundations of his revolution. If it wasn't clear before, it is now. Pope Francis is no moderate. In what some are calling a nearly revolutionary speech, uh, Francis gave a 55-minute papal tour de force in Bolivia Thursday night, calling for a structural change to a global economy that runs counter to the plan of Jesus. Uh, before I ch turn the page, Matthew chapter 7 Verse 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Because I can assure you the gospel that, that, that uh, Pope Francis claims to be proclaiming is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Francis and his predecessors have issued strong calls for, a global, for global economic structural reforms. Before, but Thursday night's address to the poor of Bolivia went above and beyond. The future of humanity does not lie solely in the hands of great leaders, the great powers, and the elites, he said. It is fundamentally in the hands of peoples and in their ability to organize. It is in their hands which can guide with humility and conviction this process of change. I am with you. In his September address to the U.S. Congress, if it looks anything similar, House Speaker John Boehner and leaders of both parties might regret their invitation to the 70-year-old Jesuit pontiff. Here are the four foundations of his revolution. Number one, land, lodging, and labor are sacred rights. In what is perhaps his boldest claim to date, Pope Francis argued that everyone has a God-given right to have a job, to own land, and to have a home. 
This, of course, is neither the promise nor goal of current economic systems established in the U.S. and around the globe. This also goes well beyond the traditional social teaching of the Catholic Church, which argues for the dignity of work, but doesn't go, far as to say, go as far as to say that everyone has a God-given right to have a job. Number two, people, not profits, must be the center of the global economy. Lambasting unbridled, unbridled capitalism is a subtle dicta as a subtle dictatorship and the dung of the devil, Francis argued that when the unfettered pursuit of money rules, that the service of the common good is left behind. Francis called on the people to counter this. Let us say that no to an economy of exclusion and inequality where money rules rather than service. That economy kills. That economy excludes. That economy destroys Mother Earth. Again, the one world religion looked for it to be a we all are on the same planet. We're all a part of humanity. The com we got to look out for Mother Earth and the common good and worship the environment and Mother Earth. Not Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. That will be hate speech. It already is. But let's take care of the environment and let's... let's, let's uh, Let's jump into this one world government, one world religion. That's what's happening. Number three, we can't wait for change. In his recent encyclical, Pope Francis said that doomsday predictions about the environment can no longer be met with irony or disdain. On Thursday, he argued that the same could be said of economic injustices. Time, my brothers and sisters, seems to be running out. We are not yet tearing one another apart, but we are tearing apart our common home. To address this economic situation, Francis argued that people must not be afraid to say we want change. And four, lasting change must begin from below. The Pope argued that the structural change won't be the result from any one political decision. Change from below works, the Pope said, because when people get caught up in the storms of people's lives, they are deep, deeply moved and compelled to act. Pope Francis' speech didn't reek of socialism, communism, or Marxism, but of a radical commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, it does not. Yes, Jesus Christ would certainly approve of us taking care of the poor, without a doubt. We should. But a one-ruled government controlling all the resources and redistributing the wealth is not the answer. <clears throat> it's, it's the beast of revelation. Pope, the Pope says, um, working is not working for a just distribution of the fruits of the earth and human labor is not mere philanthropy, the Pope said. It's a moral obligation. For Christians, the responsibility is even greater. It's a commandment. It's about giving to the poor and to the peoples what is theirs by right. If Pope Francis can sway Congress on this idea, then perhaps the world will begin to believe that what so many of the poor already know. Francis truly is the vicar of that poor man who came two millennia ago to save his people. No, he's not. That is a lie. The Vatican is a lie. It is a political pawn of the new world order. It is not the representative of Jesus Christ on earth. If it was, don't you think he might mention Jesus Christ every once in a while? Don't you think he would stand up for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ? I, I read articles every single day about this guy, and he almost never mentions the name of Jesus. But he's got people believing that um, he's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And no, this false gospel is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. His radical new economic system is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. This man is extremely dangerous. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 to 18. And behold, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Kind of like this article I just read. <clears throat> and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, which causes the earth, and them which dwell therein, to worship the first beast, whose deadly, er, deadly wound was healed. He exercises all the power of the first beast. Well, who gave the first beast, which is the Antichrist, his power? Well, Revelation chapter 13, verse 2 says, And the dragon gave him his power and his seat 
and his great authority. Satan himself gives his power to the Antichrist and the false prophet. Verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the moon by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might by or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his numbers is 603 score and 6. Now again, this article ended with Francis truly, it, 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 that Francis is, is the vicar of that poor man who came two millennia ago to save his people. Supposedly, he's the vicar of Christ. You take vicarious fili day and add that up, it comes to 666. The false prophet or the second beast is the one who enforces the global economic system, the mark of the beast. It says in verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand that no man might buy or sell. That's where Francis is heading, into a global economic system. And this, What do they call it here? They called it... Uh, he called strong ec global economic structural reforms. It's a nice way of saying the mark of the beast. Well... Again, I'm going to keep tabs on this guy every single day and keep <laughs> spreading the truth of what he's up to. Let's, speaking of uh, the mark of the beast, let's look at this article. Italian schools, Italian schools automate lunch payments and orders. I'm not saying the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. I'm saying... Technology like the RFID chip, verse 16, caused them to have a mark in the right hand or in the forehead that no man might buy or sell without it. RFID technology is the type of technology required for the one world economic system known as the mark of the beast. Out of RFID Journal, Italian schools automate lunch and payments. It says a UHF RFID system from Caden and RFID Global by Softwork enables employees to automatically collect lunch orders as children arrive at schools in the city of uh, Casa Massima. Pu five public schools in Casa Massima, a city in Italy's uh, Apulia region, are using a radio frequency identification solution to identify children as they arrive and to automate the ordering and payment and payment of each child's lunch. Since the system was taken live in the fall of 2013, the technology has reduced the amount of labor for school personnel, ensured that food isn't wasted due to over-ordering, and enabled parents to make lunch payments online. The system consists of a passive RFID tag attached to each student's backpack, a reader portal installed at each school's entrance, and software to manage the collected read data, issue alerts, and make payment deductions for every meal. RFID payments. The, the solution is provided by systems integrator Caden using RFID hardware supplied by RFID Global by software. Uh, let me scroll down. It gives you a lot more information about that. But let's go down here to the next page. This is at the entrance of each school. RFID Global installed a, I'm not going to go through the technical details of it, um, and it uses RFID badges containing, interestingly enough, alien technology RFID chips were attached to the top of students' backpacks. Each RFID tag's unique ID number is linked in the KUDOS system with the corresponding child's name and payment status, as well as any special diet requirements or allergies. Again, they're given a number that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
When students arrive at school each morning, the reader at the building's entrance captures each child's backpack tag ID and forwards that data to the Kudos software residing on the school's database via a Wi-Fi connection. The software identifies how many students will require each type of meal based on diet requirements and places that order with the caterer. It automatically deducts the lunch cost. Get that? It automatically deducts the lunch cost from each child's account. The catering company can then prepare the exact number of meals required for that day. Uh, it says uh, about 99% of the students could be identified while walking through the RFID portals. Families of the 1% of students not being identified were instructed on how to adjust the badge's location on whatever. Now, um, <clears throat> Guys, as you can see, the Mark of the Beast type technology is being tested and quite frankly implemented all around the world. There are people who are already getting the same chips, RFID chips, implanted into the hand. It's already been done. They can use their hand to turn on lights, open, log on to the computer, store digital currency such as Bitcoin so they can pay for things, store health records like in the Obamacare Act uh, like this thing here is talking about food allergies they know about all that they track you it's all coming and it's being told to you that it's a great thing for convenience and for safety so we can you know have like here worried if we can get the payments for the child uh, not waste food uh, we can worry about special diet requirements and allergies right through your RFID tag and you know what? Here's the thing. Your RFID tag attached to your backpack could be lost or stolen. But if they go ahead and put that RFID tag or chip in your hand or in your forehead, that would prevent that, wouldn't it? You can't forget it. You can't lose it. You can't be stolen. That's where this world is headed. It is time to wake up. And for all of you out there who like to, again, say you're just twisting news stories. You're twisting news stories in Scripture. You're twisting Scripture to, to make it fit your, sto your news. Again, I'm going to ask you, how am I twisting that news story to, to, to fit with Revelation 13? It causes them all to receive a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. They can't buy or sell without it. People are willingly ignorant. Let's move on. You're just going to read this headline. Putin calls for removal of sanctions on Iran. Here we are again, Russia and Vladimir Putin showing support for his ally, Iran, his ally in the Gog and Magog war, I believe the soon coming Gog and Magog war, when Turkey, Israel, excuse me, when Turkey and Iran and Russia and Libya will attack Israel. Vladimir Putin calling for the removal of sanctions on Iran. And speaking of Iran, as again, I, I've, I've seen reports today that we have an agreement with Iran, then I've seen that maybe we don't have an agreement with Iran. Who knows? But uh, while, while all that's going on, out of the Times of Israel today, chanting death to America and Israel, millions of uh, millions chanting death to America and Israel. Millions march in Iran on Al Quds Day. Protesters burn U.S. and Israeli flags at annual rallies and condemn Saudi Arabia over the Yemen conflict. It says millions of Iranians took part in an anti-Israel and anti-U.S. allies. Uh, let me let me start that over. Millions of Iranians took part in anti-Israel and anti-U.S. rallies. They crossed Iran on Friday, chanting death with America, excuse me, down with America, and death to Israel on al Quds Day, internationally observed annually on the last day of the month of Ramadan. Uh, the controversial holiday was proclaimed in 1979 by Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini and as a religious duty for all Muslims to rally in solidarity against Israel for the liberation of Jerusalem. Tehran says that the occasion is meant to express support for Palestinians and emphasize the importance of Jerusalem for Muslims. Uh, enough said on that. I'm going to put all the links to these articles in the description box so you can check them out yourself. But uh, 
can can Iran make it more clear on a daily basis that they hate the United States, that they hate Israel, and they they will not stop at anything until both are destroyed? Yet for some odd reason, the P5 plus one continue to negotiate with Iran, ignoring the pleas of Israel. We're we're heading right toward. The Gog and Magog War, the Battle of Armageddon, the second coming of Jesus Christ to set up his millennial reign on earth. We are running out of time. We're living in the very last days. I pray that you are ready. I shared the gospel beginning of the of the video. I'm not going to go all through that again, but I'm going to tell you right now. If you do not know for sure that you are saved, today is a day of salvation. Jesus Christ shed his blood for you 2,000 years ago and died on the cross for you. And if you will turn to him in faith... Repent of your sin and ask Him to save you. He will. He will write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will be ready. If you do not, and you die, if you die in your sin, you will spend eternity in hell. Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He will save you. Make sure you're ready. Keep looking up. God bless everyone.